Hey everyone, Adam here with a Darkest Dungeon 2 Highwoman Guide. In this video, I'll go over all the abilities for the Highwoman as well as what adding a mastery point to each skill does for you. My hope is that this video series will help you decide who you'd like to unlock skills on first during your playthroughs. The Highwoman's first skill is Wicked Slice. Wicked Slice is a decently strong melee attack that can be used from any position other than the back and hits one of the front two enemies. While an enemy is on death's door, it will also ignore 20% of their death blow resistance. Using a mastery point here will increase Wicked Slice stats across the board, adding damage, crit chance, and additional death blow resist ignore. The Highwoman's second ability is Pistol Shot. Pistol Shot is a ranged attack that can be used from any of the back three positions and hits any enemy other than the front. This skill has moderate damage and decent crit chance. Adding a mastery point here will up your damage and crit as expected, as well as cause Pistol Shot to consume its target's combo token, resulting in the Highwoman picking up a Repose token for himself. This Repose token will cause the Highwoman to counterattack the next damaging attack against him. The third skill of the Highwoman is Duelist Advance. Duelist Advance is a melee skill that can be used from any of the back three positions, hitting an enemy in any of the front three positions. Although this skill's damage and crit chance are relatively low, it does send the Highwoman forward a position and leaves him with two Repose tokens. Upgrading Duelist Advance will increase its damage and crit chance, cause it to award three Repose tokens instead of two, and give the Highwoman a dodge token, causing the next attack against him have a 50% chance to miss. The fourth skill for the Highwoman is Tracking Shot. Tracking Shot can be used from any position, but can only hit the back three positions of the enemy. The skill requires the target to have a dodge token and will remove that token on use. You can also use this skill even if the enemy is stealthed. Using a mastery point here will make Tracking Shot remove stealth as well as leave a combo token on the target. Unfortunately, this is currently one of the worst skills in the game in my opinion, and I think it will get some sort of update in the future. As it is, any skill can remove a dodge token from the enemy, so using something like Pistol Shot on an enemy with a dodge token will not only remove the dodge token, but it'll have 50% chance, or 25% depending on the type of dodge token, to also cause damage. Yes, upgraded Tracking Shot can ignore stealth, but it just isn't enough to warrant ever taking this skill or wasting a mastery point on it in its current state or with the enemies that are currently in the game. Next, we have the Highwoman's fifth skill, Take Aim. Take Aim can be used from any position to remove a blind token from the Highwoman, as well as adding a crit token and a dodge token. The crit token ensures his next attack will crit if it lands, whereas the dodge token gives him a 50% chance for the next attack against him to miss. Adding a mastery point to take aim causes the skill to give you an additional crit token, as well as a speed token, ensuring your highwayman will go earlier in the next round's turn order. Now we are on to the skills that start out locked. You'll need to visit and complete Shrines of Reflection to gain access to these skills. If you'd like to see all the highwayman's Shrines of Reflection, be sure to check out that video from me in the comments and description. The highwayman's sixth skill is Point Blank Shot, one of my favorite moves from the first game. Point Blank Shot can only be used from the front position, and it only hits the front rank enemy. Using this skill will deal high damage to the target, knock it back one position, and leave it with a combo token. The skill also moves the Highwind back in position as long as he's not rooted at the time, making it a perfect follow-up after a position 2 duelist advance. Upgrading the skill with a mastery point increases the damage and crit as usual, but notably most of the additional damage comes on the bottom end of the attack, making the damage much more consistent. It's important to note that Point Blank Shot is one of the few skills in the game that adds a combo token to the enemy without needing a mastery point to do so, so this is a really great skill to take if you want an early combo point for something like a Jester Finale to blow up the first rank on turn 1. And here's where I take a quick second to say thank you to the nearly 17,000 of you that have subscribed to the channel so far. I really do appreciate it and wouldn't be able to keep making this kind of content without you. Now back to the guide. The next unlockable ability for the Highwoman is Grape Shot Blast. Grape Shot Blast is a ranged skill that can be used from any of the back three positions and hits both of the front enemy positions with a low damage AoE attack. Using a mastery point here will up the skill's damage and crit, as well as make it consume combo tokens to add repose tokens to the Highwoman. As you probably guessed, this is basically a weaker AoE version of Pistol Shot. As with all AoE attacks in the game, it can never be understated how great it is to remove tokens from multiple enemies at once. Grape Shot Blast may be relatively weak, but you can use it to remove block tokens on the front two skeletons in mean, the Tangle fights as one example. On to the 8th skill, Open Vein. Open Vein has the same positional requirement as the Highwoman's first skill, Wicked Slice, but trades some of the front end damage and crit in order to leave the enemy with a bleed, causing them to suffer two damage per turn for three rounds, or five rounds if Open Vein crits. 
Using a mastery point here will increase the damage and crit slightly, as well as add an additional point of bleed. Open veins can be a great move to take an enemy with death low resistance to zero health, as the follow up bleed tick could be fatal. The skill also synergizes really well with the Hellion's Bloodlust ability, helping her deal additional damage to bleeding targets. The High Woman's ninth skill is Double Tap. Double Tap can be used from either of the center positions and hits either position 2 or 3 of the enemy ranks. The skill deals decent damage, but really shines when striking targets that are already under 30% health. Using this skill on an enemy on Death's Door will also ignore 10% of the Death Blow resistance. Using a Mastery Point on Double Tap increases its damage slightly, as well as opens up the criteria for that 30% additional damage bonus, allowing you to receive the added damage on targets as soon as they are below 50% max HP. As an added perk, the Death Blow Ignore is also increased to 20%. This skill is fantastic when fighting enemies with large HP pools, such as bosses, deacons, cannons, etc., as they will be below the 30 or 50% threshold for much more of the fight. The 10th Highwayman ability is Highway Robbery. This skill can be used from any of the back three positions and destroys the positive tokens on an opponent in any of the first three enemy ranks. An important note here is that Highway Robbery ignores dodge, which means the skill will never be wasted as long as the Highwayman doesn't have a blind token on him. Upgrading Highway Robbery makes it so that the skill gives two of the destroyed positive tokens of the enemy to your Highwayman, making it incredible against Evangelists, Knights, and many other enemies in the game. Whether you upgrade the skill or not, however, it will maintain its one round cooldown. The final skill for the Highwayman is Double Cross. Double Cross is a low damage skill that can be used from either of the first two positions, hitting either of the front two enemy positions. Using this skill will leave the Highwayman with a block token, causing him to take 50% reduced damage on the next attack against him, and leaves the enemy with a vulnerable token, causing them to take an additional 50% damage on the next incoming attack. Using a Mastery Point here increases the damage very slightly, but also increases the vulnerability stacks on the enemy to 2. The skill can be good, but it's a bit situational. My favorite use so far is to utilize it in conjunction with the Leper or Hellion in order to line up some massive hits while allowing my Highwoman to tank a little bit if a stray Woodsman Axe or such comes swinging our way. And that does it. Every single ability for the Highwoman, as this is early access of course many of these could change over time, but given what we've seen so far the essence of the moves should remain, with just specific numbers being tweaked as we move forward. The Highwoman is a great addition to almost any team, dealing tons of raw damage and providing some combo points and utility. You'll definitely find yourself adding him to any dancing oriented teams or turn one finale teams you might set up. I hope you enjoyed this Darkness Dungeon 2 Highwoman skill guide. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and leaving a comment as it helps the channel out a ton. And as always, thank you for watching.